Cami Garcia and Margaret Stoll have been touring the country for many days. They've met with fans of their work in multiple cities on their tour, which brings them to the Poison Pen Bookstore in Arizona. I was curious to know more about the authors themselves and if growing up played any part in the story that they wrote together. What was it like for you growing up? It was excellent. <laughs> You're such a liar. I was so shy I didn't speak to anyone outside of my family until about third grade. I um, read all the time. I hid books in my bed and at the piano bench and I sat in an avocado tree and read all the time. I um, read in the closet <laughs> and I, my family was uh, was funky and they had food storage in the garage so I would go get like snacks like, snacks, like meant for like the big one because remember I grew up in earthquake country and like kick back with like earthquake snacks and books in my closet. I grew up in Washington DC um, and when I was about 10 or 12 my grandfather died and we moved in with my grandmother and my great-grandmother who are both from North Carolina, small town in North Carolina, and I spent a lot of time with them anyways. So I had like lots of women in my house. Southern women. Lots of Southern women and my mom lots of telling bacon. me what to do. Um, I have four brothers, so I spent a lot of time with boys, and I spent a lot of time reading, writing in my notebooks and journals. That was mostly it. Um, you know, being I... super cool. Yeah, that was it. Because I've seen the photo. I've seen the photographic evidence. Yeah, the main characters inside of the book are both kind of outcasts. So would you say that you were outcasts? Whenever you were um, well, teenagers? Ethan's interesting because he doesn't start out as an outcast. He has friends. He has. He's on the basketball team, but he kind of makes himself an outcast. He's an inner outcast. Yeah, he. Well, he doesn't feel like everyone else, but he seems like everyone else until he kind of takes the stand to be friends with Lena, who is the outcast, and that. When he does that, he creates a divide between himself and like, you know, his folks in town. I wasn't like a popular cheerleader, but I did have my group of friends. So I wasn't like all alone, a total outsider. But at the same time, I was weird. I was just weird. <laughs> Do you think that you any were. of that might have inspired parts of the character? Like Definitely. Especially Lena? Definitely. And we also believe that even people who seem popular, that everyone kind of feels weird and feels different and that people really are different so it's about how do you embrace the differences about yourself and still you know have friends and be part of the community another writer of southern gothic novels was at the bookstore rosemary clement moore is the author of the book the splendor falls well a gothic novel the original were um came out of the romantic period of literature when you had these castles and there was always this girl in jeopardy and she didn't know who to trust and there was mysteries and and um nefarious creature uh, not creatures but characters who are very mysterious and the southern gothic is kind of the american offshoot of that because we have so many strange and bizarre characters in america especially in the south that um, it became its own little genre of um, kind of this isolated environment that happens in places in the South that uh, mimics those wild Moorish castles that were the original Gothic novels in a more um, contemporary American setting. Do you think that you could have told the same story in a different setting that wasn't Southern Gothic? No, well, that's like no. a really good question. Not our that story. Is a good We've never had that question. Not our story because in our story, the South Gatlin is character. Yes. The place is a character. And I think that that's something that's in that's intrinsic to the gothic novel, whether yeah. it's the Jane Eyre and the big, you know, Mr. Rochester's house, or whether mm -hmm. it's Manderley and Rebecca, the place is a character in a gothic novel. Totally. In particular. Manderley and Rebecca Yes, good. yes. Because the house is, is a character. Well, it's like Ravenwood. Yes, is a, exactly. Like, where else would, could you have Ravenwood? Nowhere. Absolutely not. But I do think for for a, a gothic, um, like we could have set it, like you're saying, somewhere, mm -hmm. we could have set it, you know, in one like the Sugar Islands or whatever. Right, but that's still yeah. South yeah, like, but But you know, like we could have changed, it didn't have to be South Carolina. Right. It, it would have changed the flavor so much. But it still had to be though. the South. Yeah. yeah. And I think we did that on purpose mm -hmm. because we felt a lot of the books that we were reading were increasingly generic. And the we, place, yeah, it could It place. could have happened anywhere. Yeah. Right. And for me, and this is, true with your books and with mine too is that the the history of the place plays the past plays into the present uh -huh. you know everything that has gone before with the uh, 
it and all ties and, in. Yeah, it, yeah. That, that, that sense of lineage and that sense of history is very important. Another thing that's big in the South. Yeah. You know your great, great, great. Well, at least we you do. know it's we written down. down. You know, <laughs> my family tree for names like you cannot believe. Yes. Yeah. Do you go online at all? You should consider going on Twitter because there's a lot of writers on Twitter who will talk to you and you can go on and um, sometimes there's editors too. There's like editor chats and agent chats where they'll answer a writer's questions.